I, it's, it's amazing that we have this tool at our disposal as fundraisers. Um, you could think of a donor advised fund as a charitable giving account. So these, game ch- these accounts are game changers because of their flexibility, the tax benefits, and how they help donors give more easily from their total net worth, not just their income statement. I'm excited today to interview one of our favorite guests, Eric Fleshhood. Eric is the CEO of the $50 million in asset crew foundation. And Eric is going to be addressing a topic this time called the donor advised fund, which Eric refers to as a game changer. He has seen this one tool just greatly increase giving and the number of assets in the crew foundation so we're excited to find out about this this tool that eric is going to bring to us without further ado eric take it away yes well thanks jim so glad to be here uh you're you've got a terrific audience and i appreciate you having me on today yeah it you have really opened my eyes over the years and educated me to the importance of asset giving and the potential that's out there uh, and especially the difference between current giving and asset giving our topic today that we're going to cover are donor advised funds and this may be a a new term to a lot in our audience so would you kind of explain what a donor advised fund is Um, jim you could think of a donor advised fund as a charitable giving account It has features that are like a checking account in that it's a safe place to put what you plan to give away and conveniently write checks or you might say make grants from it to your favorite organizations. But instead of being held at a bank, these accounts are held at a charity or a foundation. They also have features that are a lot like an investment account. And in that sense, the funds in the account can be invested while they are waiting to be granted to your organization or to charity. And they can grow in that sense while they're, while they're waiting to be granted out. And that growth can look anywhere like from the interest you gain on a, a plain old savings account, or it could look like returns you would expect from investing in the markets. So these, game ch- these accounts are game changers because of their flexibility, the tax benefits, and how they help donors give more easily from their total net worth, not just their income statement. Wow, that's tremendous, Eric. I appreciate that. Jim, I, I, don't, I wanna make sure I don't forget to mention some of the key things about donor advice funds that explain why they are the fastest growing charitable giving instrument in the country right now. One thing that's so popular about them is that it enables a donor to easily get not one, but two tax deductions or tax um, savings on the same gift. When you use a donor advised fund to give away appreciated stock or a piece of real estate, you not only get the deduction against your income, right? We all, we're all familiar with that. You get that with a cash donation, but you also avoid paying capital gains tax on that same contribution. And what that does, Jim, is that it, it makes, depending on what state you live in, depending on what your tax bracket is, it could drive the cost of giving $1 down to 50 or 60 cents because Uncle Sam is making up the rest. You could think of it as a matching gift program from Uncle Sam, and the DAF allows donors to capture that very easily. The other thing I wanted to mention, we mentioned earlier about how while money is waiting to be granted from the donor advice fund, it can grow. Get this, Uncle Sam allows it to grow absolutely tax-free inside of a donor advised fund, and that growth can be granted to your organization. It's an amazing, amazing tool. Now, sometimes people think that donor advised funds are for the ultra wealthy, and that used to be the case, but they're growing in popularity because they have relevance to the middle income giver. So let's, when I say middle income giver, let's think, a family whose total charitable giving 
not just to your organization, but their total charitable giving for the year is $5,000. Well, it used to be that that family could probably itemize those charitable gifts on their tax return and get a higher deduction for those charitable gifts. Well, the changes that came through in 2017 made it much more difficult for those families to get that higher tax deduction on those gifts. What the donor advised fund allows these families to do is to front load multiple years of giving into one tax year and then make the grants, make the gifts out according to the normal schedule for those years. But the impact on the bottom line is they get, they end up getting higher tax dollar value out of the gift, which can be leveraged to your organization. Well, you've convinced me that uh, a donor advised fund is important. Um, I, I'd love to know what action steps uh, you would give for our audience on how they can act this. But before you do that, just explain how this makes giving easier for our donors as well. That is a great question, Jim. Um, we talked uh, briefly before about the fact that the donor advised fund puts space between tax deadlines and giving decisions. And that creates space for a more joyful, thoughtful, considerate giving, which brings the fun back into it to the donor. I mean, we're right here going into the end of the year. Crazy time. People are going to get busy with holiday activities. And yet it's the greatest giving season all year. They're trying to think about how to organize their giving, where they're going to give it to, uh, you know, tr keeping track of those receipts. It's a lot of pressure coming down all at once. The donor advised fund introduces some breathing room in there for the donor to make it a smoother process. Uh, but consider these practical things. The donor advised fund takes care of issuing and mailing the checks for you. Uh, it also creates one source for your charitable receipts at tax time. So instead of trying to collect those, find those, this website, that website, this organization, you have a one place to go for your receipt for tax purposes. And the donor advised fund, most platforms now give you 24 seven online access to your giving history, the organizations you're supporting, making grants in the middle of the night or at a time that's convenient for you. You can do it on your mobile phone. You can do it any time of the day. And uh, that creates a great amount of convenience and a sense of um, security for our givers. Well, let's say our audience is, is sold like I am to this donor advised fund. What kind of resources, where would you send them to? Or where would you send the donors to? I, I know Fidelity, as an example, has one of the largest donor advised funds out there. Uh, but what else? What are the options that some of our, our, our organizations who are watching this have or the donors? Well, Jim, when it comes to that, um, I would say, yes, there, it's a competitive landscape. There are lots of providers out there, but I would, I would counsel your givers to first think about finding an organization whose values align with the giver's values, because that, that's very important in having a donor advised fund. While I compared it to a checking account or a brokerage account at the beginning, uh, that analogy falls short because it, it, the values of the underlying organization are tremendously important. You wanna make sure that they're gonna be in agreement with the grant recommendations that you make out of the fund over time. So that's where the values line up, need to line up. The second thing I'd say is um, we, we wanna enable our partners to comparison shop and compare apples to apples when they're looking at different providers. So there's three types of uh, fees that are normally associated with a fund. There is the administrative fee that is often charged and that covers things like, uh, you know, mailing the checks, setting up the account in the first place, doing the accounting work on, on, on the account that you hold there, that administrative type work. The second charge you want to look out for is 
if I'm investing part of my uh, donor advised fund, what is the charge for that investment service that's being provided to me? You want to look out for that. And then the third thing is, um, and this is getting a little bit technical, might be a little too inside baseball, but those of uh, our donors who know about investments are going to realize that there's an internal uh, charge that a fund manager, and when I say fund, I mean investment fund manager, is going to charge for you to be invested in their mutual fund. So the different DAF providers have different ways, different labels, different nomenclature to identify those charges, but we can help our donors out by helping them understand those three basic types of charges. Give us an example um, of what the what an average or a typical fee is for something like that. Yeah, well, the administrative fee, uh, which is charged by the donor advised fund program itself, uh, I've seen fees uh, that equate up to two percent, and even more uh, because it might not be an outright fee, but it may be a suggested donation that you make to the donor advised fund program itself as part of you know, their, their service. Um, at Crew Foundation, the foundation where I work, we have zero administrative fees on our program. Uh, so the gamut can run from zero to 2% or, or even more in the form of a, uh, a, a suggested grant. Well, Eric, as we wrap up our broadcast, uh, any final thoughts, any parting comments that you would leave for our audience? Yeah, Jim, I want to I want to make this real practical for the development officers and directors that are out there listening right now. I really feel that you need to make sure all of your development staff understand how a donor advised fund works. The goal is for them to at least be conversant about it. We are quickly approaching the day with the growth of these funds where not understanding a donor advised fund would be like not understanding how your donor's checking account works or not how understanding giving by credit card works. It is becoming that important. The second thing I want to say is that you, you could take the practical step of finding out who gives to your organization using a donor advised fund or who in your donor file has a donor advised fund. That way you're, you're better positioned to bring up points of relevance, give new giving strategies, helping them understand how to leverage that tool for all it's worth to benefit your organization. But it starts with knowing who's already got one in place because I don't have to do the work of helping them set it up. And then the third thing I would suggest, Jim, is that anybody working in development really seriously consider opening a donor advised fund account for themselves. It's not just a tool for the wealthy. And in fact, we're seeing the democratization of donor advised funds where the cost of having one is coming down, uh, minimum account amounts are coming down. And if you open up one and start using it, uh, you're gonna understand uh, it, it be able to talk much better and be much more comfortable bringing it up and educating others about the benefits. Well, Eric, thanks again for joining us on this episode of Jim and Java and Development Effectiveness Strategies. I appreciate you so much. Pleasure, Jim. I hope you enjoyed this message that Eric had today dealing with the donor advised fund and uh, donor advised fund is just as you saw an amazing tool eric refers to as a game changer and i would agree with you on that particular item if you enjoyed this broadcast please give it a thumbs up hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and click the bell so that you're notified of future videos that are out there and if you need to reach me, you can email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. I'm out on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. You can also send messages and questions to me on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. So as we always say, we're here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. See you next week.